Hello everyone, it's uh, time for another message about what's going on in our current uh, situation. These are days that are filled with stress and worry and uh, uh, fear and frustration and anxiety. There are a lot of, lots of bad news. We have a great number of stressors and we need to know how to, how to take care of things, how to be proactive and do a good job as believers. So our, our, our message is uh, entitled uh, Faith Over Fear for the Long Haul. Now, we've been going through uh, the uh, self-quarantine, self-isolation. We can't get together. Everybody's wearing masks and gloves during the, the uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic here. Today is actually April the 17th, 2020. So uh, we're well into all this going on here, and we need to talk about that. So I wanted to share with you today a little bit of what the scriptures would say about how you and I can uh, do a good job of handling this. Because this has gone on for a while, and it's wearing on people's nerves, and we're getting frayed and, and scattered and worn down by it. And so this is a good time to regroup and uh, regain our faith and see what the Word of God has to say about these things, okay? So our text this, uh, this day about the situation is one of my favorites concerning these things, and it comes out of the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Let me read it to you here. It says this, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think about these things. Let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this blessed and beautiful day. We thank you for your, for your blessings, for the kindness you show us, for the provision you give us day after day. Thank you for faith and for strength. Thank you, Lord, that your peace goes beyond understanding. Lord, we pray today that you'll give us again insights and uh, understanding and, Lord, bolster our faith and help us to regain our strength and to soar like eagles, Lord. We uh, pray for those dear souls on our hearts and not doing too well, and ask, Lord, your richest blessings upon each one. Thank you for your love. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for changing our lives. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we tell you nothing else, again, we would say, dear Lord, we love you. Thank you and praise you. In Jesus' holy and mighty and blessed name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Here's the thing. We have been under these stressors for quite some time. And it begins to to um, eat away at our confidence, it, it eat away at our strength, and we, our, our role has changed. Now, it, as we go through life, everyone goes through adversities from time to time. Everyone, everybody has problems and difficulties. And, and, it's, and it's different sometimes when it's just a personal, private thing that, that if, if I'm having troubles, then I'm, sometimes people would say, well, well, why me? Why has it happened to me? But in this situation, it's happened to everyone. Uh, you know the old question, why do bad things happen to good people? Because bad things happen to everyone. So this is a good, uh, this is a good uh, illustration of that right now. Uh, we're, we're all under self-quarantine. We're, except for those uh, who are essential personnel, our, our nurses and, and firefighters and policemen and grocery shelf stockers and, and uh, things, people of this nature who have to get out and serve, take care of the public. We, we just came through a... Uh, 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 the worst windstorm in uh, 20 years. And so we had thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I think it was 140,000 Arkansans that were without power. Uh, my wife and I were without power from Sunday night to Wednesday night. So we got to, uh, we got to go camping. Wow. Why we used to do that on purpose and call it fun, I'll never know. Because it was nice to get the power back on, okay? But, uh, you know, we just had to do what you have to do. And this is, this is on top of all these other things. We've got, 
We've got the coronavirus scare. We're having to isolate ourselves. We're, the schools are closed and the kids are stuck at home. It's been raining like crazy. Everybody's locked up inside the house and can't go outside. The, uh, the economic problems have hit. A lot of people have lost their jobs and, are, and a lot more are about to lose their jobs. People have put on furlough, which is a fancy way of saying just go home without pay. And uh, it, it, the list goes on, as well as other usual stressors, the, the daily grind of life. People are still sick with other ailments, and you can't get the kind of care that you want. And, and the, the government is, is who knows what they're doing. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. And, and all these uh, crazy things that come down, and they grab our attention. And if, if for a while, it was, we were all up in the air because uh, it was just uh, all these things happening one after the other. But after a while, after a while, you know, panic is not sustainable long term. It takes too much energy. And so after a while, we begin to, to suffer from, the, from these stacked up stressors. Now, it, it, it takes a toll, and, and our stress levels and our anxieties and our fears and our worries are multiplied because we've got the virus and we've got the isolation, we've got the economics, we've got the family, we've got personal health, and, and we've got uncertainty of the future, and all these things are going on. And they add up and they become more and more heavy on our hearts and on our minds. Now, this is normal for a human being. And Christians are not exempt from these kind of stressors. Now, you and I as adults, we've been through stuff like this before. Not like this, but we've been... Uh, we've had personal stress before. We've, we've had difficulties. We, we've lost loved ones to death. We've, uh, uh, we've uh, been without work and wondered where our next meal was come from. We've, we've uh, well, just pick your poison. Those of us who are adults, by this point, after a few decades, oh, you've had some troubles, right? You agree with that? We've had some bad situations, and it was, it was a learning curve. Uh, do you remember the first time you had to go to a funeral? You're probably just a relatively small, a young person. You went to a funeral and it was like, uh, just, it was just bizarre and scary. But after years, you know, it's still very sad, but you're used to it. So we as adults, we have experience with uh, stressors. And sometimes we've had, sadly enough, experience with multiple stressors. Now, the, I, I want to draw your attention to, to our children, though. Our children are under the same stressors that we are. And they know what's going on, and they can feel it, and they listen. They know not only our words, but the, but the tension that's in our voices and our attitude and our facial expressions and our body language and, our, and all these things. It affects our children, and our kids do not have this, um, all this experience in handling stress. They're up against all these stressors, and it is a new world for them. They've never had anything like this at all. They're not used to the feelings of stress and, and, and all that comes with it. And we have to especially watch out for our kids. So you and I as adults, it's very, very important that we set the tone, that we're role models of how a Christian responds to not only one stress, but two or three or four, these multiple stressors. It is very, very important because things like this will affect our children for the rest of their lives. In these formative years, this is called an, an ACE, A-C-E, an adverse childhood event. And these sort of things affect a person for the rest of their lives when it happens to them as children. So it is, it is of utmost importance that you and I, as, as grown-up Christians, that we are role models for our young people, for our kids, to show them how a child of God chooses faith, over fear that we do not allow fear to run our lives fear is not our lord jesus christ is our lord and it's it's it, it's it sounds simple and sometimes is but there's a difference between being simple and being easy isn't there so today we're going to talk a little bit about how to go about these things now when a normally when a human being gets under this kind of stress the the, the typical human responses are uh, panic you know, it's down here in Arkansas, if, if one flake of snow falls up in the northwest part of the state, everybody goes and buys bread and it, milk and bread. You got, it doesn't matter. You got to run to and buy milk and bread because it's snowed in Arkansas, okay? And it's that way. When this thing hit, panic and hoarding. 
Everybody had to just go buy as much toilet paper as they can because, you know, God knows they may not ever make any more toilet paper, I guess. And it's just one of those things And uh, it's good. in case you have to use it for currency. And it just goes on and on and on. So, but, but the problem is that when we, when we panic, when we let this fear and anxiety grip us and we start what ifing and thinking, oh, it might get worse or we don't know what's going on or, or I better get mine before everybody else gets theirs and there's not any for me. We, we become very selfish about me and mine. I'm taking care of me and mine and everybody else, but to get out of my way, okay? And uh, they're, they're on their own. I'm looking out for number one and you know, my little, my, my, my nuclear family or the people that are closest to me, the ones that I care the most about. I'm looking after me and mine. Everybody else just can, they're on their own. Don't bother me, don't get my way, and I'm going to get it for me. And we become, we become the opposite of loving toward our neighbor. And we become selfish, self-centered, and self-serving, self-preserving. And this is a natural human spot. I'm not griping and complaining. I'm just saying, this is what you see people doing and why that they do it. It is a natural response, the fight or flight, because of all the adrenaline and all the fear that's running through our minds. This is the way people act. And they'll just panic and they'll go hoarding. They'll be selfish. Other, other people will go the other way and they'll just, they'll crumble They'll become helpless and they'll just, they'll, they'll freeze and they'll wring their hands and they'll just sit down and they'll cry and they'll just, and, and they're, they're just paralyzed by this fear and by this worry, unable to do anything. Now, some are buzz around like crazy and get out of their way and others are so paralyzed they can't do anything. Again, these are natural human responses to this kind of stressors. Um, as it goes on, okay, as it goes on, here we are in month number two. As it goes on, exhaustion sets in. Because remember, panic is not sustainable over the long haul. It will wear you out. It takes a lot of energy to be uh, filled with adrenaline into panic for a long term. You just can't do it. Finally, you just crumble into exhaustion. Now, uh, uh, this week particularly, we've seen that among our healthcare workers. They, bless their hearts, they've worked and they've served and they've worked and they've served and they've risked their lives and the welfare of their family, the first responders and everyone, they've done these things and they've, they, they fought a good fight there for, um, for a month, but it is really wearing on them and they are exhausted physically, mentally, spiritually, they are exhausted from it and, and are, we see so many of them just collapse and just burst into tears because they are completely exhausted because they have fighting hard and it takes its toll and a human being only has so much energy stored up and then we're just out of it we just we sit down and we can't go any further and it breaks our heart and we cry we weep or we shut down or we get surly or we don't talk anymore or we throw up our hands and quit and go home and lock ourselves in or whatever it might be these are responses to long-term stress that a human being goes through it's always happened this way. People in the Bible did the same thing. Elijah was this, in this situation. David was in this situation. The disciples were this way. Paul and you name it. There was a long list of people who had to go through bad situations for a long extended period of time and it really took its toll on them. And by the way, when this is over, it's going to take a long time for people to heal because people are not going to realize just how tired and exhausted and wore out they really are. They'll think they're still fine and they're just running on fumes. So don't be surprised that when we finally get to relax and take a breath, that it's going to take another month or two just to get your strength back. This is the nature of being a human being. So we want to know what we can do from God's perspective, how to, 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 to uh, handle it as best we can. So God comes along and he says, okay, I'll help you out. Step number one, here it comes. How do we do that? How do you and I as Christians... How do we respond to not only stressors when they pop up out of nowhere, but how do we take the long term, the long view? How, how do we make a marathon out of handling multiple stressors at the same time? Here's what God says. God comes along and says, first of all, I'll help you out. I will just simply give you the commandment. I will command you. The Lord God Almighty commands you. It's not a suggestion. It's not a tip. It's not something you might want to consider. It's not one perspective and viewpoint. It is a commandment from the Lord God Almighty. He says, you do not be anxious. Do not worry. Don't do it. It is a commandment. Just like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, all those others. This is a New Testament commandment from God. He says, do not worry and fear and be fretful and be anxious about anything. Now that's a tall order. That is a tall order. When God says, I don't have to be fearful or worry about, what about anything at all? Nothing? 
Well, this is what God says. So he begins with laying down the law to us and giving us that slap on the back and that kick in the rear if that's what we need. Sometimes we need a little pat on the back and arm around the shoulder. Sometimes we need a boot place in the proper space, the spot to get our attitude right. And God comes along and he gives us all that we need. So stick with me, okay? First thing he does, he gives us commandment. Don't do it. Don't worry. Stop it. You don't have to worry if you don't want to because God Almighty says that you don't have to be afraid and worried any longer. Do not be afraid. So he's, then he says what we're supposed to do instead. Okay. Be fearful, anxious, worried about nothing. Okay. But instead, I want you to pray with supplication and thanksgiving and let your requests be made on to God. And he talks about the peace of God. But I want us to look at verse number 8 there. He says, therefore. Okay. Therefore. He says, I want you to think about, if there is, are, there, are there anything good? Is there anything good? Is there anything uh, wholesome and noteworthy and valuable and, and loving and caring and godly and, and, and virtuous? Is, is, is there anything good in life? Is there anything good? The answer to that is absolutely yes. There are many things good. On what given day in your life has there not been something good going on? Something. Something. You are alive. You are spared. For us as Christians, do you, do you know Jesus as your Savior? When will that ever change? Well, it never will. So with all the stressors that are going on, God says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to shift your thinking. I want you to take charge of your mind. I want you to run your own brain. And don't let the world and the news media and, and your imagination and the things around you, you don't let your circumstances, don't let them run your mind and run your brain. You take charge of yourself. You think for yourself. You choose what you want to think about. Because on any given day in your whole life, there will always be bad things to think about and good things to think about. Oh, we got the, we, we got the coronavirus. We've got unemployment. We've got, uh, you know, long lines. We've got uncertainty. Yes, we do. But on the other hand, we've got the Lord Jesus Christ, and we've got the grace of God. We've got the ministry of the angels and the, and the promises of God's holy word. We have of Christian loved ones and family and, and church, and we have all these blessings still going for us. Yeah, but we've got all these problems. Yes, we sure do. But at the same time, we've also got all these blessings. And God says, you decide to stop thinking about the bad things. And start thinking about the good things. You choose what to think about. You say, well, I, oh, but the, but the media. And that, look, do yourself a favor. If I am going to concentrate on all that is good, I'm going to have to make room for it by getting rid of what's bad. Yeah, I can't add anything up into a cup that's already full. Do yourself a favor and limit your exposure to these stressors around you. Here's an example for you. How much of the news do you really need to watch? I would, I would guess that for me and for you, I would imagine that probably about 15 minutes a day will give you all the information. All the information that you need. You need to know what's going on out there. You need to stay in, in, uh, informed. Absolutely you do. But you do not need to spend hours and hours thinking about it, talking about it, listening to it, watching it on TV. If you the more you expose your mind to the negatives, the, the bigger the ocean of negativity in your mind. And along with it comes all the fear and the worry and the, uh, the stress and the anxiety and all the other things that come along with it. And it's going to rob you of your sanity. It certainly robs you of your peace. And it replaces it with all these negative things. God says, stop it. Don't do it. So it, first, thing, it, first thing is you stop thinking about the bad things. You get informed. You stay informed so you'll know what you need to do. And then, dear friend, you move on. And you start replacing that time and that attention, these mental resources... You only, you've only got so much gas in this tank up here, so don't spend it all on the negatives. You spend it more on the positive things, things that are good, things that are wholesome, things that are right, things that are uh, the silver linings, the things that are good that come out of it. Listen, we, 
we, we, we can't meet and have church, and so we do what we can from, from afar, and we learn to minister in ways that we didn't know how to before. The other day, the other day it, in, in my yard up here in the, in the parsonage yard, we had 25 vehicles full of my dear church family all came up and parked out there in front of my house, and they flashed their lights and honked their horns and waved and held up signs. And, and it, it, I can't tell you what a great blessing that was for me. It just really, it meant so much to my wife and I. And we were so encouraged and so blessed and we felt so loved and appreciated. I just can't tell you the, the goodness that came from that. Well, that wouldn't have happened without all the stressors going around. We, we learn how to deal and we learn how to be blessings to others in times like this. And so I'm thinking about being thankful for my church family and for the blessings of, that they are and how I can, you know, I'm, man, I'm ready to do what I can for them. Now it just, it's that law of reciprocity or however you say that. I want to reciprocate their goodness and kindness to me. I want to do more for them. It's, 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 it's love going back and forth. These are good things. And I know things are bad over there and bad out there. They are. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it isn't. But I'm saying that things are good also. The grace of God is sufficient. The Lord Jesus Christ is here. And we want to think about these things and stop filling our days and our lives, our brains, our minds, our thoughts with all this negativity because it will eat your lunch. And also, by the way, let's, let's put this in perspective a little bit, okay? I know it's bad, but uh, my dad is 97. He, uh, no, he's 98. He was in World War II. And one of his jobs was to go back over a battlefield and gather body parts and try to sort through them and figure out which part went with which part and make little piles of American soldiers. So, how bad do we have it? How bad do we have it? They grew up in the Great Depression. How bad do we have it? I had to do without electricity for three days. But how bad do we really have it? The, uh, the majority of the world lives that way all the time. They don't have electricity. They never run water. I had, to carry, I had to carry buckets of hot water nearly 50 yards for a bath. Yeah. How many people have to carry cold water from a creek three miles to their house? I want to put it in, per, in perspective. I'm, I'm not... Just, I'm not telling you that it's not anything to be concerned about. I'm saying that we want to put it in perspective. We're here and that we're, at a war, we're in a war and it's in, uh, uh, an invisible enemy. And all this is true. And it's good metaphors. It gets people's attention because people's attention need to be got because they're still acting like there's nothing going on. And it's just not a good thing. However, however, one of the ways that I combat the growing fear in my mind is to put this in perspective. Nobody's shooting at me. Okay? I live in a free country. I, be, being locked up at home has not resulted in a great deal of weight loss. Can I get an amen on that? Huh? Have you lost a bunch of weight over this? Probably not. We're sitting around eating all the time because we're cooped up in the house. And we, you know, I don't have TV in it. I don't have electricity. I don't have the internet. What am I going to do? Well, this is the way I grew up. Uh, we, I grew up with, a, with an outhouse out back. And uh, I won't boy with those details but it was not any fun and not any fun at all and uh, we didn't have air conditioning we'd have a microwave uh, uh, you know you just uh, sometimes sweating in the summer was a full-time job and we didn't have heat except in the living room where the uh, wood stove was so yeah I'm kind of a throwback so I know about these things so I'm thinking back to what it was like then and how it is now and I'm really thinking you know this really isn't all that bad from my perspective now, again, I'm not sick, and I haven't had to deal with loved ones. And so, I, again, I'm not minimizing. I'm, think, I'm saying, is there a way for you to put these things in perspective that you can compare your stressors for, from today with stressors in your past? Because remember, as an adult, you have experience. And remember that the way you dealt with them back then is the way that you can still deal with them today and not be steamrolled by all these multiple stressors in your life. Okay? Now, let's move on. We get to choose our, choose our, our thoughts. 
and uh, limit our exposure and add positivity to these things and to meditate on what is, uh, what is, is, is possible. And, and then he says, here's the key. He says, I want you to pray about everything. And this is talking to God. And I want you to do it with, with uh, supplication, which is a prayer request. Dear God, please do this and that. Um, uh, take, care, uh, take care of my friend who's a nurse. Or take care of my kids. Or uh, Lord, uh, we, I need my power back on, please, for all my food and my refrigerator ruins. And, and the list goes on of all the many things that I need for God to do for me. God, can I do for myself? I need him to bless my country and give our leaders wisdom to do the right thing. I need him to look out for our military and, and provide for my church family. The, of a long, long list of things that I need to ask God for because only he can provide these things. So I have supplications. I have prayer requests. But then he says this. He says, I want you to pray with supplications with thanksgiving. Thank, remember what I told you? Thanksgiving. About what? About all these things, these good things that are always there. There's always something to be thankful for. It it, we're, well, thank God we're not at war. It could be worse. Thank God uh, I'm, I'm carrying hot water, not cold water, in a bucket. Thank God that we're healthy. Thank God that, that, that uh, if God calls me home, we're going to heaven, and it's, it's wonderful. Thank God for the Lord and, for, and, and be thankful for these things. You, you, cannot, you, you cannot be anxious and fearful and be thankful at the same time. It's one or the other. God says, choose thanksgiving. Choose the positive. And it's not only positive thinking, but it's positive thanksgiving because it gets you back in your relationship with God. You're not just thankful in general. It's the person that you're thankful to. You're giving thanks to God. And so it gets your eyes off of the stressors, off the problems, back on God and back on His goodness and back on His grace. Thanksgiving is not just once a year. And not just a day a year, it, it, it's a lifestyle giving of thanks because you've thought about, you've, you've rejected, I mean, enough stress is enough. I'm going to meditate and think about these things and I'm going to think about the good things and I'm going to thank God for them. And that gets me connected to the positive and gets me connected to Him. God and I do, uh, our, our, my joy is renewed and, and, uh, and, and my relationship is strengthened with Him and I'm using my brain and I'm building some habits. Now we'll get back to that in just a moment. But listen to what God here says. He wants, just, he wants to spend our time in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He wants our faith to be stronger than fear. Faith is not a lack of reason. Faith is, is reason multiplied exponentially. Faith goes beyond reason. Faith is reason from God's perspective. What we, can, what we can think, what we can consider, what we can calculate and measure and multiply and speculate on, all that we can, with our rational reasoning mind, all that we can come up with is going to fall short. Nobody saw this coming. And we still don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. We just don't because our reason is insufficient for the day. But our faith, our faith is always sufficient because our faith is in God. God is, going, is beyond our human reasoning. So he reasons from his perspective. He knows what's going to happen yesterday, today, and forever. He knew this was coming. He knew what's coming next. He knew exactly what he was going to do to get his people through this. And he knows what he's doing all around the world. So it is reasoning from God's perspective. So my faith is in him and in his ability to see and to think and to reason and to control and to do all these things, to be God Almighty. So faith isn't a lack of reason. Faith goes beyond reason. And it latches onto the mind and the heart and the will of God Almighty. That's what I want to be connected to because the only person that knows what's going to happen next is my Heavenly Father, okay? God Himself, and that's it. So I want to draw to Him in prayer, think about the right things, bolster my faith, get beyond my own thoughts, my own reasoning, and latching on to God. Now here's what God says will happen. He says, if you do this, the peace of God that passes all understanding, beyond reason, okay? The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard, march guard, around your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Listen to what he said. The peace of God that goes beyond, that's unreasonable. Peace that is beyond reason like our faith is. The peace that God has. The peace that God is. Peace is the, is the awareness of the blessings of God and the presence of God. That's what peace is. The peace of God. 
It is knowing that where you are, he is there well. He is, that is knowing that, that whatever your circumstances are, they're in his hands. All your circumstances and your situation. There is a peace that settles down when Jesus is, is there. When I go to him in prayer and I take all my worries, all my cares, all my concerns, all my prayer requests, and I wash them away in thanksgiving, and I bask in the presence of the Lord, I'll find that fear and anxiety has gone out the window, and I get instead the peace of the presence of the Lord God Almighty in my soul, in my spirit, in my mind, and it marches, it, it, it marches guard, it walks guard, it marches around, and it circles my heart, which is where my faith and my affections, my fear is located in my, in my heart, uh, loyalty and courage, uh, personality, deep thoughts, all that's in the, seated in our heart, and my mind, my reasoning capacity, my, my thought process, my will, and all these things, that I have the peace of God, says he's going to march guard around my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. Everything comes out of the Lord Jesus Christ, out of the cross. He purchased this for you and I on the cross of Calvary. Because he died on the cross, because he gave up his peace, his joy, his love, because he took all stressors on him, right? All stressors on him. Because he did that, now he can offer us an alternative by the power of his blood in his name, by the cross. He says to us, we do this through our Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. He can handle it. He can handle us. And the more I can take of my time, my attention, and my resources and focus them on the Lord Jesus Christ, get my, get my faith built up and my peace of God built up and run my mind. It's a learnable skill. It's not easy, but it's doable. And it is a learnable skill to drive your own brain and not let the world do it for you. To focus on the Lord God Almighty. If we'll do that, then we'll have the peace of God about ourselves. Whatever comes, comes. God's grace is sufficient. The next stressors that come, they're on their way. Sure they are. They always are. Welcome to life on earth. But God's grace is sufficient. He's already there. And I'll never go to a day in the future that God is not already there and already prepared for that and prepared for me. So whatever happens, some things we can do about, do, it, do something about, it, some things we can't. But God is always powerful, almighty, and right there. Okay? Last thing is this. I told you that uh, panic is uh, unsustainable. Stress is unsustainable. It finally wears us down. And uh, the, human, the human creature is extraordinarily adaptable. We, we live in every climate on earth. We can make a way to live and under every situation and circumstance on earth. People live and after a while they act like it's normal i remember seeing uh, pictures of of children playing in bombed out buildings like nothing had happened they're running and laughing and playing and i mean they're scarred because of the tr of the of the stresses but but they finally i mean eventually people got to eat you have to sleep you have to get water it, life goes on sadly it does they're their responsibilities you, you have to you no longer have a choice and so after a while the exhaustion sets in and the adrenaline is just you're out of it and so finally people discover a new normal now, i know some people that's gone through personal tragedies like this and they say well this is my new normal i've lost a spouse and and uh, this is my new normal now it's, it's it's me and everything is different and always will be so this is my new normal Okay? That's what's going to happen to all of us. Uh, eventually, we'll get into a routine. We'll get into a, uh, uh, well, a new normal. And this will be the way life is for, for a while. I want to encourage you to go ahead and look at what's going on now and lay claim to that as the new normal and be proactive about it. Now, I don't mean to accept all the problems and do not, that, uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking the long view of these things. And said, okay, if this is the new normal, then what do I need to do? Because, again, uh, we got to go to work. we got to cook some food. we got to take care of the kids. we got to do this. Got to pay our bills. Got to eat and sleep and all these other things. This is the new normal for us. Now, that means it's all become new habits. Habits. A world without Jesus will fall into other kinds of habits. They'll be escapism. Or, or they'll freak out, or they'll they'll shut down, or they'll just give in to the 
to the selfishness and the self-preservation and the hole up and point guns at everything that moves, they'll just fall apart and sit around and wait on somebody else to wait on them hand and foot. There's all kind of long-term, long-term um, uh, ways that people deal with a new normal. But you and I want to choose our habits. We want to choose how we live in this new normal. And God says, I want you to do this. There's your new normal. Do not be anxious and fearful about anything. But with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So if there are things that are good and wholesome and profitable and valuable and praiseworthy and holy and godly, think on these things. Let that be your new normal. Let that be your new set of habits. Run your own brain. Let Jesus Christ have a hold of the steering wheel. God bless you. Hang in there. We can get through this because God says we can. And His grace is always sufficient. Amen. Let me pray for you right quick, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray for these dear people who are watching and listening, Lord. And I ask you, Lord God, that uh, as always your grace would be sufficient. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you'll uh, move away their fears and their worries. And Lord, let it be replaced with peace, the peace of God in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word and for your promises, Lord. And we pray that you'll help us to uh, demonstrate to others around us, especially our kids, Lord, how a Christian deals with bad situations in life and how that we uh, always claim our faith over the fear. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We're so thankful, so grateful for who you are and all that you've done for us. Thank you that things are as well with us as they are. Thank you that you get us through day by day, that you keep your promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We praise your blessed and holy name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. This is Brother Johnny Taylor saying I'll see you next time.